Hello again, gentlemen. Welcome to the first day of Thatch's Thatch Can Style Wrestling. There's a lot of glare coming off that dome of yours. Squirrel nut! What does WrestleMania mean to Brock Lesnar? It's a day that I get to show up, kick somebody's ass, and get paid to do so. Crying out loud, you can't use a thing with you swearing like that. I don't give a damn. I came up here for a purpose, to prove some son of a bitch and thing. And I'll tell you what I came to prove, that Lawler didn't have the guts. Hey there, folks. Welcome to We Don't Know Wrestling. I am your host, Sam. This is episode 118, and I'm going to be upfront with you. This is probably going to be a bit of a short episode this week. I just started a new job, which is amazing, but also definitely limits my ability to watch wrestling in the past week or so. So we're going to kind of hop right into it. Starting with number five, want to give a big shout out to one of the elite tier posters of Twitter.com, especially in the wrestling sphere of all of Twitter, though, really. The big dog, Dave Meltzer. He busts out a really tremendous treat. At, I said treat, I meant to say tweet, but treat is accurate. Busts out a great tweet. August 15th. 4.36 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at Dave Meltzer WON. AEW big increase likely has to do with big numbers for Last Jedi lead-in. It's a true double whammy. You hit on a kind of a backhanded AEW topic. Sure, they saw a big increase, but it wasn't on them. And then you give it to Last Jedi, a movie that is a split let's say, where real wet diaper babies dislike this movie. The right sort of wet diaper babies that would go after AEW for whatever reason humanly possible. It's a, it's just excellent. It hits right on. Dave Meltzer keeps bringing the heat every time out. You got to give it to him. You got to give it to him. Now, number four, West Coast Pros, West Coast Cup. 2022. I wanted to give it a little bit of air because it's a big weekend for independent wrestling, especially at sort of this regional level. You have AIW's Jaylet, which honestly looks like it's going to be a pretty strong card all in all. I'm excited to see how that all turns out with Don Castle there, Dominic Carini, Colin Cheech, it's going to be a fun time, but I need to kind of talk about the promotion that sort of, I don't know, it sits below the death match, the hardcore promotions on IAW TV, but that's about it. West Coast Pro has done a lot to sort of establish their status as one of the more prominent regional indies in this country, and the tournament looks like not bad. It, it looks good. It looks like what I would want out of a Rachel tournament. You have folks like Starboy Charlie and D-Row going against each other in the first round. Starboy Charlie, someone that's broken out a little bit more because of GCW. D-Row, someone that hasn't and probably will never really reach that certain status, but he's really good. He's real good. Uh, super charismatic. So that's an exciting match to me. Dave Richards versus Levi Shapiro feels like a match between to West Coast, Pacific Northwest, just dudes, which is interesting because they're just like elder statesmen now. They are the old folks. Levi never breaking out of the region. Davey sort of still taking bookings. He has lasted so much longer than I ever would have expected. You have uh, Commander uh, Luchador, who's going to be, so if I pronounce that wrong, apologies, who's going to be on the show uh, in that same vein. You have Marshall Slamovich, Brian Keith, as far as bigger names, and 
Chris Sabin. He's going against Titus Alexander, a wrestler like I'm not super high on. I know a little, quite a few other, other people are. Not in my circles, I guess, but I know quite a few other people are. But regardless, like that's another high-profile matchup for Titus Alexander. Even if I don't like the wrestler, like that's the way I want to see sort of a regional guy being built up. He's going against the name talent. He had that big match against Will Ospreay. He has a match now against Chris Sabin. He's had sort of what you would hope for out of a talent. And by, well, I'm not the biggest fan of the matches, the, the output, like enough people are where I'm, I, I can't say it's a, it's a bad thing what he's doing. He's doing it. The, they're doing it the right way as far as building him up as sort of like a premier talent on this side of things. And if things kind of go well, like he could be facing either Alpha Zo or Masha Slamovich in the second round. That's it. Either one, I think it's a really interesting matchup for him. Masha, because that's just a different sort of body type you have to go against. Alpha Zoe, because that means he's not going to be going against a star. He's not going to be put up against a star attraction. He's going to have to elevate the match himself by being in it versus sort of leapfrogging someone else in some way. Um, Nick Wayne versus Brian Keith is an interesting matchup because I think it could go south fairly quickly, but if it goes the right way, if they at least accept that Nick Wayne and Brian Keith should not be going 50-50 with each other, then you've got a really darn interesting match in your hands. I think this is a really fun tournament. I think it is a little undercut by the fact that King of Indies is coming up now. (laughs) So that sort of throws a little wrench of sort of the big West Coast tournament. This feels like definitely a little bit more of a regional feel and I dig that because now we'll have this, JLit, and SEI kind of in a, a couple week period. And that's, I would, I'm really excited to see kind of who comes out of that. So I would like, okay, yeah, let's put a, three, a three-way match between those folks. I Between SEI winner Jaden Newman, whoever wins JLit, and whoever wins West Coast Cup. I think at the very least, they should probably get automatic bins in King of Indies. That would be very cool. I would love that. Let's show that these tournaments matter beyond their regions and that they have an impact on the greater scheme of things. King of Indies could be a really is gonna be a really cool tournament, even if Marafuji is in it. So I'm really hoping we get a shot for some other talent. So I think this tournament's gonna be fun. 18th and 19th. It's gonna be on IWTV. I can't imagine this show, these shows being bad. They might not be just blow ray great, but they're I think they're a less quote unquote stacked than some of the other cards they've had. And I think those expectations are gonna work for it, not against it. All right. So number three. I wish I had more to say here, but it's a little bit of a what I've been watching sort of period here. So last night I did dig into some lucha, and that is one area where I'm like, okay, I have been neglecting my lucha as of late, especially for, for 2022 specifically. I want to put together a top 100 for someone, whether it be, I don't know. A we don't know wrestling 100. Not sure about that. A the Chris 100 for our Smash 50. A TWB 100. I don't know, but I want to be able to put that list together at the end of the year. And I feel like I'm in a much better position this year than I have been in the past couple of years. But I want to make sure I don't neglect Lucha because it feels like that's always the first thing that goes with so many folks, and that's not fair. Like Lucha is amazing. It's so freaking good. So, I watched Arrow Panther and Fight Panther versus Crazy Boy and Joe Lighter. I don't know what to tell you guys. I'm a, just, you know, give me a stunt show. Whatever. Against aging bodies like Crazy Boy and Joe, Joe Lighter. Or Leader. Uh, that's kind of my vibe sometimes. Having watched also a little GCW this week, just kind of see, like, okay, what's they're the biggest entry in the country. Let's see what their homecoming show looks like. This is like, okay, yeah, this is as good as anything. Probably on those shows. It's sort of just a stunt, fun match. And they do enough cool stuff to make it, okay, that's a win. That's a W. I'll put that on the board. Then I also watched Ricky Marvin versus Crazy King from January from Vanguardia. Ricky Marvin, still the man. He is a asshole in this match. Does some cruel things to Crazy King. Crazy King is super plucky. It's a, it's a darn good match. Absolutely go out of your way to watch it. It's so good. But the match that really kind of blew me away this week of like, okay, yeah, this is a great match. This is a truly 
This is the great one. This is a four, this is the four star. This is okay. Let's put on the list. This is something I'll be considering as a kind of a fringe end of year sort of thing. It's like that freaking good. It's Black Terry, Black Terry, Cerebro Negro, and Doctor Cerebro versus Dick Angelo, Three G, Puma de Oro, and Penali. That's just an ass kicker of a match, folks. Just getting bloody Black Terry, old man, bald as shit. Getting rocked. Puna Oro, sort of like not the, the greatest offensive professional <laughs> wrestler you've ever seen, but he sells like a gosh darn madman. And it's just a, a rocking match. It's violent. It's the kind of lucha like, okay, yes, just give me 20 minutes of this and I'm I'm a happy man. It rocks. Absolutely go see. I have your way to see that one. If there's any match I talk about today, that's the one to go see. 100%. Number two, I want to talk about some GWE. Because I'm getting amped. I'm getting excited. Just talked about how I'm interested in doing a top 100 list for 2022. Want to get more onto my deep dives for 2026. Greatest wrestler ever. It's a huge deal to me. It's a huge deal to people in my friend group. We're all jazzed. I want to kind of give a shout out for this week. One, because when I had a kind of a few week break and I was sick and had COVID and whatnot, like I, I, I missed talking about this because I was going to mention it then. But Cheap Pop. Cheap Pop is a blog, and they've been doing some GWE deep dives. I will say, I don't love sort of the structure, and I hope like we can work with them as a group to figure out, okay, what are we doing here, and what can we do to kind of make sure that like it's achieving the end goal? So they are using a three-character tier, which I, I like how they're kind of breaking this out to some extent. Versatility, style of work, and watchability. I think there's some a little bit too much overlap, but like I like the idea behind it trying to figure out okay let's get these all in the same playing field to some extent it's a little close to big lab but it's like i feel it's more abstract enough to make sense but i like someone new sort of entering the group entering the discussion we're having more and more people entering the discussion that are in a younger age bracket and i'm like okay i'm turning 30 this year i'm an old damn man god that's hard to think about but good right to see them kind of join join things here yeah, open the Gleet Gate, Nova, starting to do some deep dives. We'll be posting blogs about it. It's got his YouTube channel, which I think has been doing some some great kind of recaps of, of years. Shitty name, has to change it. Think of your own your own verbiage. But, like, great videos. And I want to get a special shout out for talking about GWE. And the reason why I kind of want to bring it up this week that I wasn't going to was Brock, Brock Janky putting out a post on PWO for Jim Dugan or Duggan, depending on if you are a commentator from Mid South. It is a tremendous post. It is a totally different view than Duggan that most people have, but it is written with passion, it is written with <laughs> the evidence. It is a great write up for a wrestler that you probably aren't considering for GWE, and you absolutely should. And for the evidence I've <laughs> reviewed for the footage I've watched, like, yeah, spot on. Nails it, rocks it. I just need to watch more. It's the thing. So I'm excited. And I think that's the my thing about GWE is I can get excited about watching a wrestler I never in a million years would have thought of. Yes, need to go watch my Godfather matches. Need to go watch my D'Lo Brown matches. Need to go watch my <laughs> Team Blinko matches. So that's what GWE is about. It really get, kind of inspires me to watch stuff that I'm not, I'm not thinking about. So I'm super excited. Well, read Brock's post. I'm going to have a link of it below, whether you're listening on your podcast tab. It's going to be in the description or you're on YouTube. It's going to be in the description. Great, great post. Number one, giving a shout out to the Trust Busters. An inspired piece of booking, inspiring collection of talent i do not know how tony khan thought of this group it has parker boudreau coming off of getting let go from nxt a dude that looks like nxt 2.0 sort of ran all over him you got slim j that slim j from old roh and wa Wildside. you have ari davari that's just coming off of being on that uh, 205 live and getting in and working in WWE for 
for however freaking long. Not someone that you associate with like great wrestling even. So like, okay, why is why is he getting picked up? And then now, based on an angle from Rampage, you got Sunny Kiss. That's a special group of talent because you just you give me a hundred guesses that you know, and four of uh, four members, I don't think I'm getting three out of those four any given time. It's just not something you would think about whatsoever. During that angle where eventually Sunny Kiss comes out and kicks Orange Cassidy in the nuts, we do get to see Slim J essentially not do any offense to best friends, which is a bummer, but he goes flying for for them. And he, this is not a young spring chicken. He looks great. When he gets to do a little bit more of the actual wrestling, he's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty amazing to actually be able to see that on national television. Freaking wild. Parker looks absolutely fine for just like this, an average big dude. Gives his best friends the guzzle. Like, it looks, looks fine. Like, yeah, okay, I get it. He's doing that. I, we want, I want more predictable big men projects in wrestling. They can turn out actually pretty darn good. Davari, he, he, he's going to be a mouthpiece more often than not, it seems. And that's not bad. I think that's a perfectly fine role, especially with this group. Because it's just like he's an odd mouthpiece for this odd group of talent. As a wrestler, hopefully that's not like a long-term solution here. That's Sonny Kiss. Great talent. Not someone you would put in this group ever. It just doesn't... He, they, they do not scream the Josh Busters. But no, that's what makes it perfect, I think. This is kind of the group that in my eyes, sort of overtakes the need for a dark order. This mishmash of talent that has so much personality and gives off this great vibe. Dark order, like, keep John Silver, figure out what to do with the rest of them. Because Alex Reynolds, he's a guy who never probably should have made it in the majors. So, like, he should be just feeling good they got this far. Uno, I like Uno a lot. I just don't know if there's like a, a place for him with his character in this promotion. And so that's like it. That's kind of like, you know, okay, there's not much else for that that group with, with uh, Dose gone. So there's that. But I'm excited. Trust Busters, like that's something to get behind. More of this, please. More of just this, okay, off the wall stuff. Even if like at the end of this, they make it a run in the trios tournament and then get shipped off to ring of honor. That's a huge win. Cause like, yes, I'm interested in whatever they're doing in ring of honor. I don't know what they would do. Cause I don't know if that's a promotion, but I would, I'd get excited about it. So there's that. I think that's it though. I think that's, that is episode 118. I said this was gonna be short. I don't know what this is going to clock in at, but hopefully not too long. Thank you for listening. Go follow us at, WDKWP and on Twitter, go leave us a five star review on iTunes. Tell your friends, give us a retweet. I don't know, but we've been producing a lot of great stuff on the feed with Quentin and Tim doing a great episode with Dan Makabe and Dylan Hales. Then you have Dave Musgrave and Law slash Charles doing a, a new episode of Pretending to Fight absolutely go listen to that it's it's good times it's popping off give it a listen give a review tell a friend thanks